Within higher ed, though, we're thinking often about community cloud services, where it may be a group of universities that are coming together and offering a cloud service amongst themselves. And so as we begin to think about policy and legal issues, one of the questions that we don't want to see happen is, is that innovation be stifled within higher ed communities or other groups um, around offering some of these kinds of solutions. Besides community cloud solutions, um, we're also looking at things that are often termed hybrid clouds, where they might be, and a good example of that is there's an activity within the higher education space for archival of data, and it's called um, Durk Space. And what it does is um, it leverages private cloud, you know, the, the public Amazon storage and other groups but universities contract in mass, and you can set criteria. Do you want geographic diversity? Do you want performance? Um, we contract, and in bulk, we're essentially buying these services and acting as an intermediary for all the different institutions. And so it's a slightly different view of how to leverage um, cloud computing. As I think about higher ed, I mean, what's, what's really been interesting is that we like to collaborate with one another. And so we're very um, much akin to trying to do things where um, we work um, jointly on projects and frankly, um, delivering IT services from a campus, unless it really aids education, it's not a core activity that we're trying to produce. Um, I think one of the things that has held cloud back, and, and I haven't heard yet really mentioned, is stability. And so we have researchers who are often dealing with four to seven year grants. And um, the reality is, is before they entrust moving to a cloud environment, they need to have some assurance that ultimately um, that group is going to be there. Because if it would leave in the middle of their grant cycle, it could be disastrous to um, what they were trying to do. And so that's really, I think, um, put a break on some of the ways that we might have been able to leverage things like uh, Amazon and others. Um, and then the last piece that I wanted to highlight is, is that within cloud computing, um, there's a trust question. And so thinking of this as an enterprise, as an enterprise, I want to leverage multiple cloud services that are going to be available to me. I need to have a framework that I can be letting my users take advantage of multiple mechanisms without having to have a different username and password for each service that they may go to or a separate account generation process. I've got as an enterprise to be able to handle that through my own policies and my own security practices. And so within higher ed, we've been working quite a bit on federations that could then bring cloud providers in and offer a way where as an enterprise we can be doing the authentication and uh, trust delivery. And so some of the, the challenges that I've seen within um, higher ed is, is um, one of the big ones is really determining service level agreements. I mean, right now, the vendors are really giving us service levels agreement. We're not dictating service level terms to the vendors. And what's happening is, is the reason that's the case is that, frankly, very few higher education institutions really understand what their own service level agreements are today with their end users. Um, and so we've got to get much more sophisticated if enterprises are going to, going to begin to leverage cloud services because we've got to turn service level um, agreements around to be much more um, in our favor. Um, contract terms are really a key issue that as we've begun to try to work with vendors, we see very different terms across all of the different um, cloud service providers that are there. And so as an enterprise, especially a public enterprise, it really is an impediment in trying to work with that. Um, ownership and control of data is key. Um, before we're going to put enterprise data into a cloud environment, there's got to be a mechanism that we have in place to be able to extract that data out um, and to be able to continue whatever service if that vendor would go out of business. And so there's a very major risk mitigation effort that IT has to think about um, when you're doing this. And, and lastly, 
um, in the higher ed space, but I don't think it's different than others, we have been burned by vendor lock-in. And so many instances, we went to um, enterprise resource programs, ERP, in the late 90s and early 2000s. And now, once we are locked into a vendor, we see um, draconian cost increases on a yearly basis. And so there's a fear that cloud computing could be another one of those um, entities that we may move to. 